Hello, in this video today I'm going to show you how I cut a face stencil. Now you can buy face stencils from various places. I know Tina Wakeley makes them and also Jane Davenport. Um, but um, there's a limit to how many times you can use the same stencil. So here is another option if you want to make your own. This method is using the tones. Um, and I, I am outlining here the darker tones on this photocop, this print of a face. Now I find faces from free image sharing sites. One is Upsplash and there is another one. I'll link them down below. And there I search for images that have the right sort of darker tones in them. If you have um, a face from something like a Vogue magazine or something like that, usually the model is photographed in very bright light. So the, sh the shadows don't show up so, wa so well. So a more artistic image works a lot better for this method. So as you can see, I'm picking out the shadows. I'm going to get rid of the hand later on. And I'm going to get rid of her teeth as well. So I'm just drawing around and I'm just picking out a little bit of light um, in there for the eye. I'm just trying to decide what to do with the mouth. And I do go in and correct some things after a little bit as well. Once you've done one or two, you get an idea of how it works. Once you make a mistake or two <laughs> by cutting out the wrong bits. There, that's better. Just gonna rub out that bit that I don't want. Refining that little shape down there. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go with my ruler and I'm going to cut out all the bits I don't want. Not actually cut, but I'm just getting rid of some of the bits I don't want. Just refining that line there a little bit as well, giving her a bit more of a cheek. Because what I want are the white bits to touch the edge. And you'll see why when I actually do the cutting. Actually, you'll see why when I start doing the inking in. So that's the area I want to work in. And so now what I do is I get a big pen and I basically ink in the areas that I want to cut out. This is quite fun. I quite enjoy doing this bit. It helps me see where, um, where I need to cut. Because if you don't have, if you don't have it right, you can end up cutting out the wrong bits. I've done that before. Now, I'm doing it this way, but if you have um, editing software, you can also do it in, I do it in Photoshop. And what I do is I take this image and I will turn it, to, turn it into a black and white image, remove all the colour. And then I will, um, I'll increase the con contrast, so I'll lighten the lights and darken the darks. And then I'll apply a filter. And the filter, there's two filters I can use. One is the photocopy filter or the stamp filter. And you tweak it a little bit until you get something like this. Now, if you haven't got that, but you don't want to do the tracing like I've done, another way you can work is to go and take it to a photocopy place, take a bad photocopy of it, and then take another photocopy from that photocopy. And eventually you'll get something like this that you can work with. That helps you see the tones if you find it difficult to see the tones. I know it's not an easy thing to do for everybody. So you can see the face beginning to uh, take shape now. This is also rather reminiscent of street art. If you think of Banks's, um, 
what are they called, uh, images that um, appear in places. He does giant stencils like this. And I'm going to ignore those teeth. I don't want them in the picture. I think they're a little bit too, too stark. And I quite like it black like that, much better. So it's fairly simplified. I think I've finished at this stage. And I go and get everything ready to do, cut the stencil. And then I realise I've missed a bit off on the right hand, bottom right hand side. You can see it. See, I'm just doing it now. I don't know how I forgot that. But there you go. But I'm going to do it now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the, stent the cutting equipment out. And you may have seen me cut a stencil before, so it's the same technique. So here it is. Now, that's a sheet of glass I've got behind it. I'm just pasting, I'm just uh, attaching it with some tape, just some washi tape, to the back of the sheet of glass. I'm going to turn the glass over. And now you can see a red dot on her. That's my camera reflecting in the glass. And now I'm going to get a piece of Perspex. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a clear one. I have some coloured ones, but I think I've used them all up now. So I'm going to, I'm going to use that. And the tool I'm going to use is um, my soldering iron. So it's all heated up and ready. And I just go around the lines now. This tool is working very nice. This piece of Perspex actually is um, some old packaging material. Um, if you have some, save it because it's useful for these little, little things. Saves you buying it. I don't recommend children doing this. I don't think it's safe. I also don't recommend doing a lot at one time because I don't think the fumes from the hot plastic is very healthy to inhale. I'll probably be coughing a lot later after doing this. So little and carefully. And so the important thing to do when you're planning a stencil is that you don't have any white bits within the black bits. Because imagine there was um, a white circle in the middle of this eye. It wouldn't show because um, I'd be cutting it out along with the black bits. And that's why you have to think about it when you're planning it. But as I said, that's something that comes with experience. The more you do, the more it makes sense. And what to do is I go around the outlines and then I take the um, little bits out afterwards. is the final bit then we're going to put that in its stand and I'm going to get um, a pin or I'm using the uh, tip of my compass it's, this, pl this plastic is a little bit thick so I'm having a bit of a struggle separating it the thinner ones often come away a lot quicker. And I, I remember being quite surprised when I first started using this method was that the glass could cope with the heat. And it does. I thought the glass would shatter or something. It's quite surprising. It's just ordinary picture frame glass. I do like making my own stencils. I like having my own stencils. I do like the ones that both Tina Wakely and Jane Davenport do, though. But I just like having my own.
So yes, normally this is a lot quicker. I mean, you don't have to use a heat tool to cut stencils. There are some beautiful blades out there on the market that are a lot easier to use on your hands than the just standard um, blades are. But um, I find it very painful for my hands and I'm finding this painful taking off the plastic. So um, it still is a lot easier using the heat tool. There we go, this is the last bit. Let's see if I can get that bit off the end there. Yep, that's peeling off. Let's try this bit. Right, that's coming off. That's it done now. A little bit on the right hand side where I've gone over a bit. So what I do is I put a little bit of the washi tape on and I use it with, you know, if, if you make a mistake, you can repair it with a bit of washi tape. I'm twisting it so you can see it in the light. And now we're going to use it. So I can move everything out of the way. I'm going to put down a piece of my drop paper. We're going to do something on this collage sheet. I'm going to put the face there. I'm going to use some drop paper underneath. And this gives me something I can put almost straight or entirely straight in my um, art journal tomorrow. So I'm getting my acrylics out and a sponge. Uh, my acrylics have dried out a fair amount. I don't think I had the lid on firmly. It needs refreshing. All I've got that's wet here is a bit of blue, a bit of ultramarine blue and a bit of magenta. So I'm going to mix those together, make a darker blue. And I'm going to use a sponge. I have a stash of them underneath my desk. A stash of cloths and sponges and interesting painting tools. So here we go, just dabbing it on. And I don't bother washing my stencils um, if I've used acrylic because it tends to just stay on the stencil. And to be honest, I'll be able to see it more clearly now with a bit of colour on. Do you have many stencils? If so, how do you store them? I used to, the smaller ones I keep on a ring, but the larger ones I keep in a file. And I'm not sure it's the best method. Let me know down below if you've got a good solution to that. I'd be very interested to hear. There we go. You see the face a bit better, but you'll see it even more in a minute. Let's move this stuff out of the way. We'll have the final reveal. That's lovely. So that's what you get. And it's very clearly a face. And all it is is blobs. It's quite clever, isn't it? There, there it is. So thank you very much for watching. I hope it's helped anyone who wants to give that a go. I quite like the uh, texture background actually on that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Bye. Mm.